Hello everyone, it's Davey Mooney coming to you from the University of North Texas where I run the jazz guitar program. Benedetto artist, a Sunnyside Records artist, and I went ahead and uh, <laughs> I uh, put all four of my Sunnyside uh, releases up here. I thought it looked a little nicer than just having the, the most recent one, National Saw Live at National Sawdust, Benign Strangers, Hope of Home, and Perrier Street. Check them out. Got my Mel Bay book, uh, Personalizing Jazz Vocabulary, and I'm hard at work on another uh, another book on position playing. I'll tell you more about as it gets. Uh, <laughs> I've done a couple chapters. I got about four more to go, so we'll see. Um, but today I wanted to talk to you about the Thelonious Monk tune, Panonica, which uh, man, it's a beautiful song. One of his uh, one of his best, I think, in my humble opinion. Um, it's been recorded a bunch of times. I think the original recording is on Brilliant Corners, which I love. He's playing a celeste on it, I think. Toy piano, something like that. And uh, you got Sonny Rollins, you got Max Roach, you got Oscar Pettiford, uh, Ernie Henry, is that the alto player's name? I hope so. Um, hope I'm not forgetting anybody. And yeah, he, he recorded it uh, a few times. He recorded it on a solo record. I think the uh, there's another recording on uh, What's it called? Crisscross. I had to look it. <laughs> I had to look that up. And you know, a million other people have uh, have done it. Gosh, Chick Corea uh, on uh, Now He Sings, Now He Sobs. Not sure if it was on the original record, but it was on the, the CD that I got. Um, that's a sort of more up tempo version. Uh, Kurt Rosenwinkel on uh, East Coast Love Affair. And you know, I do this tune in my improv class, and when students do transcriptions on this song. Man, they come from all over the place. Jerry berganzi has got a version. Um, I could go on and on. But, uh, yeah, like I said, it's a really beautiful tune. I really like the horn arrangement on uh, Brilliant Corners. It's, it's kind of quirky. It's super specific. And uh, I wrote that out for students, and I showed them some of the things. Because, um, you know, with, with Monk's music, it, in a strange way, I kind of find it similar to Tom Jobim, not in the, <laughs> the style of their music, but in the sense that there are elements in the tunes that can't really be uh, reduced to a, a lead sheet. Or they can be, but the lead sheet needs more than just the melody and the chord symbols at the top. And I don't think you have to play all the other information every time you play the tune, but I think it's good to be aware of it. So I'll go through the chords and maybe point out some of those things that occur. Uh, you know, he doesn't do them on every version. Other people, like Chick Corea doesn't do all of them, Kurt Rosenwinkel doesn't do all of them, and they, you know, their versions are great too. But I think it's important to have some awareness of, of some of the monkisms, if you will. So the tune starts like C major. The Brilliant Corners version is real slow, like super slow ballad. I kind of like to do it in between that and say Chick Corea, where, where it's more of a medium uh, tune. But he goes like, and uh, I like that, like the, uh, horns on Brilliant Corners do that. You've got, I assume, I guess it's Sonny Rollins down the D going. And you get that second, which I think is nice. And then Sonny goes. And so those chords are like C major, E flat minor, A flat seven, and then D minor. They play unison here. And then I think somebody stays on that note. I'm not going to over every single thing that they do, but so you got C major, E flat minor, A flat seven, D minor, B flat seven, E flat major, and again the horn part. And that's a real a, a monkism that he does a lot. So on E flat uh, major seven, he goes. You see later on the tune, he likes to go. That uh, movement, sort of a moving inner line. Um, in this case, I guess it's, it's the major seven going to the major sixth. Later on, it's going to be a different interval. And then you have, uh, so we're on E flat major. And a lot of versions will do an A7 here before going to A flat. The Brilliant Corners one, it's not as pronounced. I think Monk might play like a little chord in there, but it's not uh, so much like Chick will be like. as much on Brilliant Corners. Um, and then the next part, you got A flat seven to D flat seven. 
G flat major seven to F seven, and then E flat minor, A flat seven, G seven, D flat. And uh, some of the interesting stuff in there, you know, the A flat seven, a lot of versions, Chick Corea plays A flat minor, he does like a, just a regular two five. A flat minor, D flat seven, G flat. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh. But uh, Monk definitely it's A flat dominant, D flat dominant, G flat. And then I like on Brilliant Corners, they go, let's say. I'm trying to get all the notes. I don't remember all of them, but I like he goes here. On that F7, the melody. That second there. So you could go like. little strident but you know that's a, a feature of Monk's music when he's playing uh, you know really beautiful melodies adding in elements of, of dissonance you know like Ugly Beauty for example which you know the title says it all and uh, let's see then uh, I like to do that it's hard not to do that as a guitar player the melody goes to go uh, motion, although the chord itself is just E flat minor. E flat 13, G 13, and then here, the melody it goes to a D flat major 7, and he has that moving line from uh, G to F, which I think is kind of important, at least to be aware of that. Oh, I think that's a nice element. So, and then it's interesting, too, because this sort of deceptive, you think maybe it's going to go to C again, but it goes, uh, you know, E flat minor, A flat seven, G seven, D flat to get back to C. So it's kind of long way around. Are we going to go to D flat? Are we going to go to C? Okay, D flat major seven is kind of a tritone sub of G seven anyway. So it's a, a interesting little harmonic maneuver there. Then the uh, that section repeats, and then the bridge. We got a lot of chords. We go uh, G minor, C seven, C minor, F seven. And then like F sharp seven or C sharp minor F sharp seven B. Then D minor G seven C major seven G minor seven C seven B minor seven E seven A seven A flat seven G seven C. So a lot of information, my goodness. And uh, let's see, some of the uh, horn elements are kind of fun. There he goes like. G7 uh, to C, and the horns, at first they're in an octave, so the melody's at E natural, and then the melody goes down to uh, E flat, but the, the tenor, I assume, goes from E natural up to A flat, and then back to E, so you have this... But I just really like that, uh, the movement with the horns, and it must have been worked out, I assume, at the piano or something. I don't think they would have uh, just spontaneously come up with that, but gosh, who knows. Um, and then the last A section, is it's like the first, although there's a little tag at the end. So you got... Chick Corea version, it's a little awkward at the end to play over. You have this. Then D minor 7, A flat 7, G7 again to D flat. So he simplifies it a little bit. He goes. Uh, instead of going D minor 7, A flat 13, flat 9, G13, flat 9 to D flat, he goes. Uh, 
So E flat minor, A flat seven, A flat thirteen, G thirteen. Then he goes E minor to D seven to D flat. So he gets rid of the D minor, A flat, G, D flat, and goes A minor, D seven. So it's like that, you know, tritone sub of the whole two five. Maybe a little nod to Bud Powell in there. Um, there's a lot of Bud Powell's music will have that uh, tritone sub of the entire two five. West Montgomery does that as well. Um, I talk about that in the book uh, a fair amount, but yeah, like I said, it's a beautiful version. I like to incorporate some of the uh, stuff from uh, from Chick's version when I play it, so I kind of split the difference. Um, I, I make reference to some of the things in, uh, in Brilliant Corners, and Chick Corea, this particular thing that Sonny Rollins does where he goes, you know. Chick does that too. I think he plays it rhythmically a little differently since the tempo is so fast, but that's a sort of uh, monkism that's in a lot of versions. It's in Monk's versions. Kurt Rosenmichel doesn't do it, but I mean, his version is fabulous, you know. He has so much uh, chordal information, and my students transcribe that solo all the time. So before I take a few choruses on this tune, I'll just talk a, a little bit about a few little harmonic spots that I find interesting. Um, first couple chords, it's fairly straightforward, you know, C major, and then... 2 5 E flat minor to A flat 7 of course it doesn't it doesn't resolve to 1 then the next uh, sequence you got D minor to B flat 7 to E flat so, you know the 2 chord of, in the key of C and then a 5 chord in E flat um, and I find it kind of interesting because the melody there I think when I first started playing this tune many many years ago and my instinct is, was to uh, kind of alter that B flat 7 because I wanted to alter all the dominance because I thought altering dominance was cool which I still do but uh, I find with that B flat 7 you got to treat it kind of a particular way I almost feel like either you know F melodic minor or B flat uh, half hole diminished is a good way to treat that or just play over a B flat 7 without worrying about alterations but you don't really I don't feel like I don't feel like the sharp five is really the right way to go, so if I'm playing. Right, on the B flat seven, I wouldn't go. I don't know, that doesn't sound right to me, and I don't really know why, but <laughs> I mean, the melody has a sharp 11, so maybe that's it. Uh, precludes the sharp five. Um, let's see, the next part, you got the two five in G flat, and then this F sharp seven altered. And so I'll just play regular two five by my two five stuff. And then one way to think about it is G flat major, going to F seven, you could think G flat major to G flat minor. G flat melodic minor that would give you the uh, you know super low graded mode over the F seven or you could play like F uh, augmented uh, triad which I like you know because the melody is on the sharp five and then after that that F seven it goes to E flat minor so there's some dominance that they sound like they're resolving uh, to the right spot but they don't really go there but maybe one way to think about that is kind of like F seven going back to uh, if F7 is going to E flat minor, it's kind of like F7 going back to G flat in the sense of that um, sort of G flat major becoming G flat diminished. F7 can be a five of uh, a three resolution. It gets a little complicated. You can watch my uh, diminished uh, video if you want to, you know, review all that information. But I think there is a way to make F F7 go to E flat. And you can kind of hear it. It just sort of goes there. And then that, you know, the chromatic dominance there, then going to D flat. Sometimes I'll just play them in a sort of a kind of literal way. And I noticed that about a lot of, you know, saxophone players playing on, on Monk's music. John Coltrane, Sonny Rollins, Johnny Griffin. I mean, a lot of the time, they just play, Charlie Rouse, they, they just play the changes. You know, even if there's a million chords and they're a little bit unpredictable, those tenor players just, just run the chords. So sometimes I'll that's sort of the best solution rather than to overthink it. You know. Nothing wrong with that. On um, the bridge.
bridge, you know, it's just a lot of chords, really. Gosh, you know. So you finally have a 2 5 that goes to 1. The first two, G minor, C7, you think, oh, it doesn't go to F, okay, it goes to C minor, F7, it doesn't go to B flat, but then you have C sharp minor, F sharp 7, B. Resolution. Then D minor, G7. Okay, there's a 2-5, but then it immediately then goes to uh, G minor, C7. And then that doesn't go to F. You got B minor, E7, A7, A flat, G, C. So it's just a lot of changes. And, you know, I think maybe one reason I don't like to play the tune too fast is I like to have some time to, to get into all that harmony, you know. Sometimes I don't get them all. So from B minor. It's tricky to get it all in there. Hopefully I'll do it on the uh, when I play the song for y'all in a second. And then like I said, the last A, it's the same deal except that last uh, progression, I like to use the Chick Corea chords. And so if I'm going... Uh, so you gotta say... From G flat... to go A flat 7, G7, and then do it again the next measure. That's like too much of that chromatic 2-5 for me to sort of uh, as an improviser. So uh, anyway, that's the condensed version of what I think about on this tune. I do uh, address these chord changes in my book too, in uh, similar chord changes to these uh, in Personalizing Jazz Vocabulary. If you want to get some specific uh, stuff to play over it, check out the book. So. All right, I'm going to play a few choruses on this, and I hope you all enjoy it. Thank you. 